Hey y'all, last time we did the additive property of equality, which meant when you have an equation and you add something to one side or subtract something to one side, you do exactly the same thing to the other side. It's got to be fair, got to be even, right? Okay, today we're going to do the multiplicative property of equality, which is exactly the same thing except just multiplying. Okay? This is what it looks like. You don't have to write this down, but just understand what it means. A, B, and C are real numbers. No, we always use real numbers. If A is the same thing as B, then if you multiply C by A, it's going to be equal to the same, equal to C times B. There we go. Or if you, you know, A is equal to B, if you multiply it this way, of course, it doesn't matter what order you multiply things in. 7 times 9 is the same thing as 9 times 7. Okay. All right. Well, let's try a couple of these in a second. But, you know, again, I just want to remember, equations do stay exactly the same if you multiply or if you divide by both sides by the same number. Uh, that's just a rule. You'll see why this is true in just a second. Okay. In other words, 5x times 20. Okay, well, if you multiply or divide by exactly the same number on both sides, it'll be exactly the same. So let's try these three. Um, how many x's do we want to, let's do this one first. How many x's do we want? We don't want five of them, we want one of them. Well, right now there are five x's. Okay, well, we can, you know, we can take this five, we, since we don't want five of them, and we want one, well, we need to divide by five, right? And if we divide by five on the left side, that means we must divide by five on the right side. And on the left side, five divided by five is just one, right? So that we're good. We have an x. Now we have x is equal to 20 divided by five, and that's four. And that's all we need to do, okay? Now look at this middle one. Copy this down if you need to, pause it. This looks a little bit more complicated. It's not. We just deal with fractions. It just takes us a little longer to do that. All right. So let's rewrite this thing. I hate to see mixed fractions, so I'm going to rewrite this. So 5 eighths times a d is equal to negative, okay, it's going to be a negative. 3 times 7 is 21 plus 1 is 22. So negative 22 over 3. Okay. Uh, well, uh, we're going to, we don't want 5 eighths of a d. I, I don't want 5 eighths of a d. So I'm going to divide by 5 eighths, right? I don't want that because 5 eighths divided by 5 eighths is just 1, right? But if you divide the left side by 5 eighths, you must divide the right side by 5 eighths, okay? Well, we know how to handle fractions, right? If you divide by a fraction, that means you take the second fraction, you flip it, and you multiply, right? So our answer is going to be, in other words, this is one, which is what we want. So we're gonna have now D, just one D, is gonna equal negative 22 over three times, not five eighths, but eight fifths, right? Okay. Well, uh, you know, tw negative 22 times eight, we, can, we don't have to do the arithmetic, but it's gonna be 176. Three times five is 15, and boom, there we go. Okay, that's our answer. Kind of a complicated looking answer, but it's not. It's just a fraction. You just did arithmetic and figured out what it was. All right, here we go. Here's a weird one. Look at this last one. Negative 8a is equal to 56. Well, I don't care what negative 8a is. I want 1a. And I, in fact, I want positive 1a. So I'm going to have to turn that negative 8 into a positive 1. Well, what am I going to need to divide by to, get, to turn negative 8 into a positive 1? And of course, the answer is negative eight, right? Whatever number you see in front of that, you're gonna divide by that to give yourself one. Because any number in the world divided by itself gives you one, right? Okay, well, if I did divided by negative eight to the, on the left side, I divide by negative eight on the right side. Negative eight divided by negative eight, one. That's what I want, A, okay? Well, what is a positive 56 divided by a negative eight? A positive divided by a negative is a negative, and 56 divided by a uh, 8 is just 7, so there is my answer right there. All right. Do one thing to one side of an equation, do exactly the same thing to the other side of an equation. Okay. And I'll look at this. Let's, we did this one. Uh, let's, let's do the other way. What we did before was to divide. So let's look at multiplying by the reciprocal. Okay. That's another way of doing this. In other words, when we did 5, x equals 20 on the left side, we just went, okay, I'm going to divide both sides by 5. 
Okay. The other way to do this is to take that five and go, I'm going to multiply by the reciprocal. Remember, if you have the, like three eights or something like that, how do you turn this into a one? What do you need to multiply three eights by to turn it into a one? You need to multiply by the reciprocal, right? Eight over three, because 24 divided by 24 is one. So that's what we're going to use. Anytime you want to turn one of these numbers, not into a five or some crazy other fraction or whatever, but you want to turn it into a one, and that's how you solve equations is you turn the x into one. You multiply by the reciprocal. And we did it the other way. Let's try it this way. Well, if you look at this number five as a fraction, it's five over one, right? If you want to multiply that by the reciprocal, that's going to be one over five, right? Okay, and look what happens. The fives cancel, the ones cancel. You just have an x, right? But since you multiply by one fifth on the left side, you're going to have to multiply by one fifth on the right side, all right? If you want to visualize the 20 as a 20 over one, you're going to go 20 over times 1 is 20. 1 times 5 is 5. 20 divided by 5 is 4. Boom, that's the same answer we got back there. X is equal to 4. Okay? All right, let's try this uh, second one we had a minute ago. No, this is a new one. Okay, so let's. we're going to do both ways. Both ways. All right? If, if you see something like this, is 2 fifths X equal to, equals 8. You can, if you want to, divide both sides by two-fifths. In other words, you'll go divide by two-fifths, and you'll go, okay, eight divided by two-fifths, since you did it to the left side. You can do that. Or, or, if you don't want to go through all that rig rigmarole of flipping fractions and all that jazz and all this kind of thing, you can just take this number, the fraction in front of the x, and multiply by the reciprocal. All right? Our goal is to get positive one x, right? We want to solve for x, or a, or y, or whatever the number is. The way we do this, when we have a fraction, is to multiply by the reciprocal. That gives us 1, right? 5 over 2 times 2 over 5 gives us 1. Okay? But we're not done, because we did this to the left side, which means we're going to have to do the same thing to the right side. That's supposed to be a dot. Okay. If you want to think of it as 8 over 1, that's fine. Anyway, the 2's cancel, the 5's cancel, and you just have x. That's what we want, is x, right? Okay, well, we can cancel first if you want to, or we can just go across. I'll just go across this time. 8 times 5 is 40. 1 times 2 is 2. 40 divided by 2 is 20, so the answer is 20. X is equal to 20. All right, here's another one. Pause and copy. On this one, uh, the first thing I do is just rewrite this as an improper fraction. 9 fourths C equals 5. And we'll just write 9 fourths C equals 5. And again, I, here, here's a general rule. If you have an equation that looks like this, we'll say, you know, I don't know, 3x equals 21. If this coefficient, remember that word coefficient? If that coefficient of x is an integer, then just divide by the integer on both sides. And then boom, 21 divided by 3 is 7. You solve it. If it's a fraction, multiply by the reciprocal. A lot easier that way. Okay, so let's just multiply by the reciprocal on this to solve this equation. Well, what's the reciprocal of 9 fourths? 4 ninths, right? Okay, 4 ninths. We did that to the left side, so we must do it to the right side. Okay, we can call this 5 over 1. Of course, these cancel, these cancel. C is equal to 5 times 4 is 20. 1 times 9 is 9, and there you go. You can leave it like that if you want to. Or you can put, you know, 2 and 2 ninths. It's fine. Okay, how about this one? Z over 6 equals 2. This is kind of strange. This is different. Because look, that, that doesn't look right. This, the, that, the C is on the side of the fraction. The X is on the side of the fraction, kind of in the middle. And this is on the top. The Z is on the top. Here's the secret, okay? If you don't see a number by the Z, just assume it's a 1. Right, you can write it if you want to. Now, you can treat this as a fraction. So I would write these as 1 6 z equals 3. See what I did there? Okay. Now let's go ahead and multiply both sides by the reciprocal to clean up that fraction. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 6 over 1. So 3, I'll just call it 3 over 1, times 6 over 1. Of course, these cancel. That gives us just z. Well, 3 times 6 is 18. Divided by 1 is just 18. There we go. 
done. Okay. All right, here's another doozy. Now, this is kind of weird. Good grief. X divided by two and a half equals four. Nah, <clears throat> to that, let's say, let's make it X over five halves. Let's do it that way. This is equal to four. Okay. Well, remember what you do when you divide a fraction, right? This is divided by a fraction. Well, we know what we do, what to do when you divide by a fraction, right? You flip this fraction and you multiply, right? So x divided by 5 over 2 is the same thing as x times 2 over 5, right? So 2 over 5 times x equals 4, okay? Now we're in good shape. We know what to do. What are we going to multiply both of those sides by? What fraction? 5 over 2, right? Multiply by the reciprocal, multiply by the reciprocal, and you can go like that. Those cancel, those cancel. You got an x there. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and cancel the 4 and the 2 as well. Okay, well, x is equal to 2 times 5, which is 10. There we go. 10. All there is to it. Okay. And again, once you, um, if you have something like this, let's say it's 10x equals 70. If you have an integer as a coefficient of x, just divide by the integer of both sides. 70 divided by 10 is 7. But if you have a fraction like this, you know, 2 fifths x equals 4, multiply by the reciprocal, simplest way to do it. All right, here's another one. Go ahead and copy and uh, pause and copy here. Okay, we're looking at p divided by 3 fourths. p divided by 3 fourths. Let's look back real quickly. If you had x over 5 halves, then you know immediately then the coefficient is going to be 2 fifths of x, right? Because it's the reciprocal. So we can do the same thing here if you want to. We don't need to write p divided by 3 fourths. We can just write 4 thirds, that's the reciprocal, times p. Because here's the thing, if, even if you forget, you can go like this. Oh no, p divided by 3 fourths, that's the same thing as p times 4 over 3. Okay, then you can just go, oh, 4 over 3 times 3 is just 4 thirds p, which is what we have here. Okay, 4 thirds p equals 3 and 1 eighth. Forget that, let's go an improper fraction. 8 times 3 is 24, plus 1 is 28. Okay, so you tell me. What do we need to multiply both of these sides by if 4 thirds is the coefficient of p? 3 fourths, right? Okay, so 3 fourths, and then times 3 fourths. Yoink! Gone! There's our p, and then nothing else we can really simplify here. 25 times 3 is 75, 8 times 4 is 32. That's good enough. You can leave it just like that. Okay. All right, let's try a, b, c, and d. We'll just do um, a and b first. So Go ahead and do A and B, and then we'll come together and do them together. Or you can just do A first and just unpause it. Okay. All right, we know immediately you want to get rid of the 3 fifths by multiplying by 5 thirds. So times 5 thirds, and then 5 thirds. So, of course, this goes away. We have a nice X there. And then 27 over 3, I'm going to go ahead and cancel that. And that'll be a 9. So 9 times 5 is... 45. And there we go. All the rest of it. Okay. If you haven't done B, go ahead and pause it there. All right. Let's take a look. 3 and a fifth Y. <clears throat> Forget that. I don't want that. Let's go mixed. Uh, I mean, improper fraction. 5 times 3 is 15 plus 1 is 16. 16 fifths Y is equal to 32. And immediately, you know exactly what to uh, write down now. What goes here? 5 over 16, right? Good. See, 5 over 16, and then times 5 over 16. And of course, you can do the 1 over there. Gone, gone. We have our y, and now we just need to do a little arithmetic here. So, you can, if you look at this and go, wait a minute, 32, 16 goes into 16 once, and goes into 32 twice. There we go. y is equal to 2 times 5. y is equal to 10. Boom. We got it. Okay. All right. Try C, pause it in there and try D. Or no, probably try C, excuse me. Okay, well, and again, if you look at this as if it's X divided by 1 fourth, that's the same thing as X times, you know, 4 over 1, which is just 4. Well, that just means it's 4X, right? 4X is equal to 20. All right? And that's an integer right here. So you just need to divide by 4, 
divide by 4, and x is equal to 5. There we go. All right. Pause it and try D. Okay, I hate the way this looks, so I'm going to go ahead and rewrite this as x divided by 9 fourths. Okay, now you probably remember at this point, you can go, okay, I'm, that's x divided by 9 fourths, which is the same thing as x times 4 ninths. So you can write this equation as this. 4 ninths x is equal to 5. Now we're in good shape. All right. Now all we need to do is multiply both sides by the reciprocal of 4 ninths, which is, of course, 9 fourths. And I'll put a 1 over 5 and multiply that by 9 fourths. And that's gone, of course. I got my nice x. And x is equal to 5 times 9 over 1 times 4. And we are done. Okay. All right. Just make sure if you have a number like this, let's say it's, uh, you know, 8x is equal to 24. If this is an integer, just go, oh, I'm dividing by 8 on both sides. And the x is 3. If you have a fraction, let's say 7, I don't know, halves, x is equal to 11 over 5. Immediately, you just multiply this by the reciprocal on both sides. Two sevenths, two sevenths, boom, you got it. Okay. Y'all have a great day, and I will see you next time.